I'm going to talk about the Serapium. The, this uh, item comes up a lot. You, you'll have no doubt read about it from James Roll, people like that, um, because it has the potential to say a lot about chronology. I want to hopefully look at it from a completely different viewpoint uh, than has been looked at before and see what that says about chronology. I'm going to concentrate on architecture and nothing else and just look at the architecture and see if that tells us something about uh, chronology. Most of you will know the Serapium was, was the burial place of the Apis bulls uh, who were sacred to the god Ptah. Uh, it's situated just outside ancient Memphis, uh, you know, down by the, the bottom of the uh, Nile Delta. The bulls were buried over an apparently very long period. The earliest burials date from the 18th dynasty in the time of Amenhotep III, about 1350 BC in conventional terms, and they were still being buried in the time of Cleopatra and slightly later than that. So there's a long period of uh, more or less continuous activity. The idea was that the one bull represented the god, and the priest would choose a bull that had to meet certain criteria, that would be black and white, certain white markings. And when a bull died, it was embalmed and buried in the Serapium, and then they started looking for the next one. Typically, they, they lived for about 20 years, and 67 separate burials have been identified in the uh, catacomb. There are a lot. And 67 times 20, it's hundreds and hundreds of years. The complex was first discovered in 1850 and it was one of those wonderful, if you think of Sleeman and, and uh, off to find Troy carrying his copy of the Iliad, well, August Mariette did something of the same thing. The ancient Greek writer Strabo had talked about this burial place and said there was a long, uh, 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 avenue of sphinxes that led to it. And Mariette used that information, found remains of the sphinxes, and through that, found the actual catacomb itself. Uh, typical of the archaeology of that day, there was a big rock in the way, so he blew it up. And this is an original picture of the complex from that time. Some very early burials were individual, but what Mariette discovered was two very distinct parts of the Serapium. This portion here, the vertical part, up through here, it's what's called the lesser vaults and is clearly earlier than the rest. The entrance to, to this part, the greater vaults, cuts across, so it clearly was, was built later. Uh, this is a reasonably simple uh, excavation. This one is on a grand scale. Surprisingly, of those 67 burials, two-thirds of them are squeezed in this part and only 24 in that part. So. Uh, there are a lot of burials in the, uh, in the earlier part. And many of the burials can be linked to an individual pharaoh. The approach was to put a plaque or something there that recorded when the bull was born and when it died. So there's a lot of reference to, to different pharaohs. So as people like James and Roll have, uh, have quite rightly uh, pointed out, there's a lot of information here about chronology. Conventional views quite straightforward because of this reference to pharaohs. In the conventional view, the lesser vaults were built in the reign of Ramesses II. Not surprisingly, because when you look at the pharaohs that are attested in that vault, the oldest burial is in the 30th year of Ramesses. So that's a pretty easy conclusion. It must have been built in that time. Conventional view is the greater vaults were built in the reign of Samtek I, who reigned about 700 years later. 
Uh, again, pretty simple logic. The very last burial in the lesser vaults is in the 20th year of Santec. He lived uh, and reigned for, he reigned for over 50 odd years in conventional history, so it's very likely that Santec must have built the greater vault. And so that's the conventional view. This is a picture just of the lesser vaults. Uh, Mariette found there was a fallen roof which had caved in probably in ancient times. Uh, so uh, the belief is that that part of the vault was not actually available uh, uh, some, some time in the existence of the vault um, because the roof had fallen in and uh, no one was that keen to, uh, to repair it. This very first burial is marked here in red at the bottom in year 30 of Ramesses II. Uh, I would say, looking at it, it's a very funny place to put a first burial. Um, it seems to be tacked on the end rather than where you might expect it on the in the major part of the, of the vault. We'll look at that in more detail and try and understand that. And to try to understand the architecture of the Serapium, I want us to look at other tombs. And the classic tombs of this type were built much further south, opposite Thebes, the ancient capital of Upper Egypt. All the major pharaohs had their own individual tomb built in what's called the Valley of the Kings. And I picked out this one, which is a typical tomb from the 18th dynasty, uh, which is uh, probably just before the, uh, the vaults were, were built. And what I want you to do is look at the sort of style of the architecture. Entrance is over there. Of course, you come down steps because it's going underground small chamber and then quite a small entrance into what is called the pillared hall. These little squares represent stone pillars that have been carved out of the rock underground. Notice also, and it's typical of all the 18th dynasty pharaoh's tombs, you get this right angle to the left. For some reason, whether there's some spiritual reason for that, Whenever they came in, the pillared hall was rectangular in shape and always turned right angle to the left. Then you get a corridor that leads to a much larger hall and then any galleries for burial for the king and, and, and to contain other things for use in the afterlife were all carved out off that main hall. Probably the reason why this was you took the ball through and then there were all sorts of rituals and things to be carried out in that major hall before the, the uh, king or maybe in the case of the balls were actually placed in their final resting place. So that's very typical of 18th dynasty tombs for the pharaohs. The following 19th dynasty did quite a development in architecture. In the 19th dynasty, where we, where we find Ramesses II, there was no turn to the left. That, that for some reason, was removed, although it had been consistent. After the pillared hall, uh, the tombs went straight on, or there was a slight joggle, but more or less they were straight. Um, also in the 19th dynasty, the pillared halls were square, not rectangular. They were changed in shape. And from the tomb of Seti I, who was the second pharaoh of that dynasty, father of Ramesses II, a further development happened where all the ceilings were vaulted and some of them quite significantly arched, all carved out, of course, in rock underground. So the, the first conclusion on architecture is the lesser vaults show typical 18th dynasty features. They have the rectangular uh, pillared hall moving to the left, uh, they don't have the features of the 19th dynasty. So, on a simple look at architecture, this argument that it was, the lesser vaults were built in the time of Ramesses II 
doesn't seem to fit. The architecture of, of the lesser vaults is clearly 18th dynasty, not 19th. What I've done here is take the lesser vaults and remove all the chambers so that we can think about the design and, and think about the 18th dynasty approach. When we looked at the, the pharaoh's tomb, Amenhotep III, you had the entrance through to the pillared hall, the left hand turn, then a corridor leading to a wider hall, presumably for rituals, and then the burials were off that wider hall. So you can see the Serapium lesser vaults follow that 18th dynasty architecture very closely. And remember, where the pharaoh was buried was always in, a, in some sort of uh, area off the main hall. So if we look just at the architecture, I think it suggests that we would expect to find the burials on this corridor. Not dotted around down here, because that certainly wasn't the practice in, in the pharaonic tombs. Uh, the burials always happened after some ritual in the main hall, and the burial places were off that hall. This leads to a different way of looking at the chronology. If I'm right about this architecture, then the first burials should be off the corridor because that's the way the design says things should be. All the pharaonic tombs in the 18th dynasty came through the pillared hall, then opened out through a corridor to a bigger hall, and then you got the burials. So the architecture suggests the first burials, and maybe a clue to who built the lesser vaults, is here. So just just to summarise that, after the pillared hall, the structure opens into a wider hall. This is followed by a further widening. Beyond the hall is a long corridor. The design of the vaults appear to follow the design of the 18th dynasty, with the pillared hall leading to a wider hall, uh, where the various rituals would be held. Obvious place for the chambers would be beyond the main hall, off the corridor. So obviously, the thing to do is look at the burials on the corridor and see if they tell us something. These are the uh, attributed burials to various pharaohs. Uh, most historians seem to be pretty consistent in, in this interpretation. Unclear about the very first one, but if we follow the rest here, we have Takalot I, who was a Libyan king, Shoshenk III, Shoshenk V, two burials in the time of Shoshenk V because he reigned for a reasonable long time. That is a clear sequence through the Libyan dynasty. The Libyan dynasty was followed by the Ethiopian dynasty, Shabaka, Taharka, belong to that dynasty. And then after the Ethiopian dynasty comes Samtek I in what is called the Saitic dynasty. So looking at the corridor, it does have a consistent set in, in what is undoubtedly a chronological order. Nobody, uh, e even the, the most way out revisionists, would change any of this order. So if we look at the lesser vaults purely from archaeology and where we'd expect the burials to be, the suggestion is that it was early in the Libyan dynasty that the lesser vaults were built. And maybe le later ones, uh, because it was either a case of, of developing the corridor or not, later ones were all tacked around here just as an expedient. But that does not fit with the basic concept of the design. So that's just a, um, a tentative look at the lesser vault and a suggestion that just based on archaeology, it may have not been built by uh, Ramesses II, but actually built in the Libyan dynasty uh, sometime later. <laughs>
Right, so that, that then, very good point, because that implies something else. That if the Libyans built it, did the Libyan dynasty actually come very quickly after the 18th dynasty? Those who know the Velikovskian chronology might have anticipated that. But yeah, it's a very important point, which, which I'll, I'll summarise now. The architecture of the lesser vaults implies, and I won't go stronger than that, implies that they were built in the Libyan dynasty, but that would have to be before the Ramesside burials, which are also in that vault. This conclusion suggests that the Libyan dynasty followed the 18th dynasty, and that's why the architecture is 18th dynasty, not 19th. But then a much more significant conclusion is that that means the 19th dynasty was later than the Libyan Ethiopian dynasties. So just that quick look at the architecture is suggesting actually exactly the Velikovskian chronology. But of course this is quite tentative. And after all, we have the greater vaults. We've looked at the lesser vaults and I'm suggesting that it, they show a different chronology and a different order of dynasties based just on architecture. But of course we have a cross check. What do the greater vaults tell us in terms of architecture? Are we on the right lines or will the greater vaults completely contradict what I've said? Uh, so now I'm going to look at the greater vaults and we'll have a look at what the architecture implies there. The greater vaults are probably the greatest Egyptian tomb. This is excavation on an absolutely grand scale. Again, this is an early drawing from Mariette's time. The greater vaults have fully arched ceilings supported by dressed stone. They are six metres wide and six metres high. It is one of the most exceptional creations in the, in the whole of ancient history, particularly in Egypt. There is hardly anything which compares with it in terms of the effort that must have been expended and the quality that, is, that it has generated. Arch after arch after arch. All underground, of course. And each chamber for the individual bulls contained a solid stone sarcophagus. Gone are the simple wooden sarcophagi used in the lesser vaults. Now, each one had this massive stone uh, sarcophagus. And the galleries on the side were also arched as well. As I said, the greater vaults represent excavation on a grand scale. They are comparable in fact, there are only two other excavations in Egypt which rate at the same complexity and effort as the uh, greater vaults. One is the Temple of Abu Simbel. You know, you all remember the, the Temple of Abu Simbel that was moved when the Aswan Dam was, uh, was built. They carved the whole thing up and moved it. And everybody thinks of the, the four seated statues of Ramesses. But behind those statues, the whole temple was carved out of the rock, including statues in the temple, all carved out of the solid rock. Abu Simbel is a fantastic uh, piece of, of activity, uh, comparable in terms of excavation to the greater vaults. The only other tomb which is even bigger is KV-5 in the, in the Valley of the Kings, which was, excav uh, which was dug out for the sons of Ramesses II, all 50 odd sons. Remember, Ramesses reigned for 60 odd years and uh, had a lot of sons. It's very difficult to believe that something like the Greater Vaults was the work of Samtek I, who was actually not responsible for any other major, major building work at all. And obviously, there's an implication that something that grand was probably built at the same time as the other grand excavations. Remember, the, the most significant thing about the greater vaults are the arches. 
Everything is excavated in arches, and those arches supported by dressed stone. There's only other, one other Egyptian building which has arches like that. And it's called the Ramesseum. It's the mortuary temple of Ramesses II, built for his father by the long-term crown prince, Chaim Wiese. Let's just look at those arches. And look at those arches. A series of arches about the same size, one underground, one above ground. Khan Wiese was not the first son of Ramesses. One or two of the early sons died quite early. Khan Wiese was a uh, crown prince for probably 30 years, but he died in his, in his father's 55th year. Ramesses went on for 67 years. But Khan Wiese was the sort of top man after the, after the pharaoh and was what we probably call project manager for most of the big uh, building works of the time. Back to the Serapium, there's a lengthy inscription at the entrance. Never has the like been done. It will indeed seem to you a benefaction when in contrast you look upon what the ancestors had done in poor and ignorant works. Remember my name. I am the Sem priest Khan Wiese. Would the man who built the great Hippostyle Hall at Karnak, the Remesium and the great temple of Tart Memphis Say that about the lesser vaults? Would he consider the rather simple lesser vaults to be better than the poor and ignorant works of ancestors? The implication is that Khan Wiesen built the greater vaults because they are consistent with the Ramesside style of, of uh, incredible excavation and clearly someone like him is not going to be proud of the rather simple lesser vaults. When Mariette was excavating the Serapium, they found a, a buried under the floor the mummy of a man in a gold mask accompanied by uh, amulets and precious stones. And although the individual was not identified, all the items with him were clearly of 19th dynasty and the vast majority of Egyptologists believe this was Ka Amwiza. He was not buried in KV-5 with his 50 half-brothers. No other place has been found for the burial of, of Ka Amwiza. Uh, most historians believe this was his burial. But it's under the floor of the greater vault not the lesser vault. Conventionally, he's supposed to have built the lesser vault. So how does his body end up under the entrance of the greater vault? And the argument is, well, somebody dug it all up and they buried him 700 years later. And you can find that explanation in, in most current. I took that straight from uh, um, Kent Week's book on, the, uh, on KV-5. Uh, that's the belief. This was Kay and Weezer, but he, he was buried again about 700 years later. So, conclusions. The architecture of the Lesser Vault suggests they were built near the start of the Libyan dynasty. And the Ramesside burials were added sometime later, actually after uh, the time of Samtek I, that would be probably the 7th century. That raised all sorts of questions, but we found a consistent answer in the Greater Vault. That the Greater Vault suggests they were built in the time of Ramesses II, and both the, the, the style of the vaults, the inscription of Kay and Wiese, and his burial support that conclusion. So in fact, we've got a consistent story from the architecture of each vault. And as I said at the beginning, those who understand the Velikovsky chronology will realize that that's, uh, that's completely consistent with his uh, view that 
the Libyan dynasty came before the uh, 19th dynasty of Ramesses. So this fits exactly with, uh, with what Velikovsky said. And I think the significant thing, I think, in this is that you might get an interesting and unusual answer by looking at the architecture of one vault, but we have looked at both, and the story is consistent. They don't, con you know, we, we, we come up with surprising conclusions, but they are consistent conclusions. And so, actually, the burial of Ramesses II in his 30th year in the lesser vaults is not actually the first burial in that vault, it's the last one. Buried while his son was uh, getting a rather large workforce to create a completely new, uh, greater vault. The one thing... I have to say, in conclusion, of course, this raises all sorts of issues about which bulls were buried when and, and can that be sorted. That's a different story, but uh, I will say that I've looked at this and you can come up with a very consistent story based on this chronology for all the burials. Which act, uh, and a story which does remove a lot of the anomalies, like there's a large portion in the Persian period where there don't appear to be any bulls. And, uh, and there's a missing bull for uh, the, the later reign of Samtek I. So there's lots of inconsistencies which other people have talked about. This different, the Velikovsky chronology, can just about sort out some of those issues as well. I've managed to catch up on time. Any questions? Did KMY, KMYs die before Ramses II? Yes, yes, about ten years before. Ramses II was buried in the No, the bulls. Oh, the bulls. The bulls are. The, 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 la, the, the last bull of Ramses II was buried in his, in his 30th year, in the Lesser Vaults. And then, then, of course, what I'm saying is the greater vaults were being built at that time. Yeah, yeah. There are issues about when the greater vaults were first used. Um, because they don't, there isn't a Ramesside burial in the greater vault. The first burial in the greater vault is, is probably uh, Cambyses, the Persian pharaoh. Uh, so it does raise issues, but, but another story, but, but I believe the issue there is that once Kyle Weasley was buried in the Greater Vaults, nobody wanted to touch it, and therefore they didn't use the Greater Vaults. It became the burial vault for Kyle Weasley, and it was some time later, not, not massively later, but 30, 40 years maybe, uh, after the Ramesside dynasty had died out, that people were prepared to use it. Um, there is a bit of a gap. I'll tell you what is very, very interesting, is the only two later Ramesides buried in the lesser vault are Ram or not the, the, the kings, but bulls from their time. Yeah. There is a bull from the time of Ramesses the ninth, and a bull from the time of Ramesses the eleventh. And that, I, had, I struggled with that, so I thought, why are those in the lesser vault when the greater vault existed? But I think that is part of this great reverence for Kayan Wiesen. Those are the only two Ramesside pharaohs whose names include Kayan Wiesen. They were named after him. And I think in deference to him, they put their bulls in the lesser vault rather than put bulls in the burial place of Kyle Wiesen. So there are all sorts of issues um, that, that come out of it, but you can, you can, I have, come up with an argument which will place the burials reasonably sort of consistently. Yeah. yeah. I mean, surely there has to be a bull buried in the reign of Francis II after his 30th year. Yes. If he lived to be sick. 
Well, you said, said that was the last ball buried in Ramses II. No, the, 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 the last ball buried in the Lesser Vaults was in his 30th year. There is another one, and that was buried in an individual tomb, not in either vault. Okay. And I would argue that you know, the greater vaults took a long time. You, you, don't, you don't dig that amount of earth out and rock. It probably took decades. And if you look at the Lesser Vault, the, the Ramesses II, they were all trying to find places to, to cut a, a, you know, around that pillared hall. The corridor had been used, the roof may well have fallen in. So they were all trying to find, they're all sort of squeezed in, the, the, the last Ramesside ones in there. So I guess what happened was try to well, put another one in. You know, the new vault isn't ready, we'll just dig another individual tomb. Uh, but there are other solutions, of course. But I went to a lecture by David Roll once, one of the ISIS lectures, and he was talking about the Serapium, and he mentioned that he and a chap called Ibrahim yes. went and opened it, and that That's right. when anybody interpreted it, the inscriptions on the things in there, it would change Egyptian history. And Abraham never published anything. No, no. And then he became Minister of Egyptian History two years ago. Did he? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. He still hasn't said anything. Yes, Roll covers that extensively in uh, A Test of Time, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing to say is there is a, a real anomaly. In the, in, the, in the burial in the time of Ramesses' 30th year in the Lesser Vaults, which is sort of skated over by historians. If you, if you look at that chamber, what they say is there was a bull buried in the 30th year of Ramesses, but the chamber was reused in the Libyan period. And the reasons they say that is because in all the bits and pieces of, of uh, 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 of garbage that were pressed together to seal because once they, they put the bull in they sealed the door or if you like the opening in, in all the stuff that was squashed in there to seal it is an item of Shoshank the third now in conventional history he lived 400 years after Ramesses so how could something with his name on it be used to seal. So there's a real anomaly there. There's no evidence that it, that, that uh, uh, part of the vault was reused, but that's what historians say. Because how, how on earth did you explain a, a Libyan artifact in in the ceiling? Ceiling S E S E A L I N G. So, sorry. Um, when, when, Henry has been trying hard. <laughs> when, when, uh, when did they start sacrificing bulls? When? The yeah, there was a time I remember reading uh, that uh, they'd have a bull and, they'd, and, and they would uh, put him on a platform, put the bull on a platform, and then they would, I don't know, uh, cut his neck or however, and there'd be the blood would pour down. <laughs> There's some, uh, just I read years ago, I don't recall, this was a. The, the, this was certainly a that. Was, that was not practiced as far as the apis. The apis was the earthly representation of the god, god, and therefore was looked after until it died naturally. And you say typically they, they, they live for sort of on average about twenty right, years. Right. So we don't know. When so 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 there was no. Well, other bulls might have been sacrificed, but, 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 but the Serapium was all about the sacred bull and keeping it. There, there, are, there were one or two other cults of sacred bulls uh, in Egypt. I can't remember the names now, but th there were others. But, but the, uh, the Serapium is the only large-scale catacomb specifically for burying bulls. The, the only human burial in, in the whole of that complex is this one individual with the golden mask. I'm just wondering about the 67 that are in there. Um, these are all, how are they all attested? Not all of them are. Well, oh, oh. But they all have a label that says uh, this king and so on and so forth. And how the vast majority, yes. In fact, the burial in the 20th 
year of Samtek the first has over a hundred separate plaques proclaiming the fact the funny thing is and I think where, where, where are the plaques in the same office? yeah oh yeah yeah all found in the same place and that's part of the problem there are quite a few so there is there there, there can be some arguments about which ball was buried where and and there is evidence probably that two balls were buried in one place you know as an expedient um, and, and there are other arguments which James and Roll go into about uh, the plaques a plaque from two different kings all related to one burial and they say oh, well were there two bulls but some of them draw the, the conclusion that no these kings were contemporary and they're both recognized so there, there are issues um, uh, there are there are remains Ob obviously it's like most e Egyptian things they were plundered in ancient times so there's very little uh, in terms of uh, of jewelry anything left but a lot of the plaques are left um, as far as I'm aware the, the Samtek 20 material all, all found in the last of the uh, lesser <coughs> that's right the furthest one right up in the top of the of the corridor yeah. and Velikovsky maintains that the war animals of Ramesses II are in fact the war animals of Nikos Nikos was the son of Samtek so if Nikos well, well, carried a bull under the name well, Ramesses II you and I lunchtime were talking about data you said he's the son of Santa. Where's the evidence? Sorry? Where's the evidence that Necho the first is the son of Santa the first? There is no evidence. Mm, it's an sure assumption. That. It's an assumption. It's an assumption. Well, he succeeded him, certainly. No. It's an assumption. No. All the evidence for Santa. No, all the evidence for Santa the first relates to. 664 for about 20 we, odd we years. We've got a, a memorial of uh, an Egyptian priest who records his career and he lists the various ne kings. Neko, his... Neko was the Bob. son of a Samtek. Yes. But it doesn't say he was the son of Samtek the first. Well, it fits in the Herodotus. Yes, but where did Herodotus get all his information from? from, from? Greeks living in Egypt. No, no. No, 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 that's what he said no, that day. no, read Herodotus and he tells you where he got his information from. No, he got he some got information it. from an Egyptian priest and he got and some which, which is reliable from yes, Egyptian And which people. Egyptian priests did he get it from? The priests of Hephaestus, which is another name for Tar. Where he got his information from was the priests of the Serapium. And his data is consistent with what you'd find in the Serapium. He doesn't, that one set of information doesn't necessarily confirm the other. The source of both may be the same. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not arguing with the uh, archaeology of it. It's just that that one burial um, of the of the um, lesser vault might have been Nikos rather than the original Ramesses II. The Ramesses II, I think, mm. is, is a 19th dynasty king, certainly, but I think all the Libyan kings are the 19th dynasty known by their foreign names. Well, okay, that might be the case. I think the difficulty with, with what Velikovsky did was equate Necho I with Ramesses II. Well, he used the name, I know. I know you do. There are too many bulls. Because there is a bull for Necho, and there's several bulls from Ramesses. Yeah, I'd it's two, two bulls from Necho. Yeah. But, but you can't have all... The chance that there were all those bulls, you, ha you have to argue a lot of very short-lived bulls. And, yeah, why, what, I, and I, why, why did Ramesses at one time have the, the death of a bull recorded yeah in his name Ramesses, and at another time have the death of a bull recorded in his name Necho. Because the, the plaques are put up by other people, no one by... Because it's used as... Um, could be. I just, the, the, the thing is, you're making assumptions there that 
um, might not be true. You're assuming that the bulls died natural death, when in fact, I assume they were surrogate sacrifices for the pharaoh of the time, the ruler of Egypt, Egypt of the time. Yeah, there's no and evidence the that they were. During the time that Ashurbanipal was um, overlord of Egypt, um, his Egyptian client um, king, client ruler, sacrificed a bull under his own name, but also sacrificed a bull for Bokhoris, which was Ashurbanipal's name. And I think that the, the sacrifices were related to Mars approaches, and that, the, mm. that we had this with Alexander. But then you got to argue, I showed that corridor with all the pharaohs, which is consistent with the conventional view of those pharaohs, if you follow that, you've got to argue for some reason they weren't, they weren't in chronological order. Because I have no problem with that order. Mm. Well, I well order. you have, because, the, because you've got Santec the first as the last burial at the top of the corridor, and the one for Bokaris is further down. Yes, quite right. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Right, uh, any other question or just about...